CD38? Yeah, so CD38 was first discovered um, as, a, as a protein that gets activated on T cells. So it's a T cell activation marker. Um, but we now know CD38 can be expressed by lots of different immune cells, um, both in the, the adaptive immune cells, such as T cells and B cells, but also on innate immune cells in our, mm -hmm. our body, which include macrophages and other cell types. Um, this, um, in addition to immune cells, CD38 is also expressed on endothelial cells, um, as well as on um, other, other cell types as well. Um, and CD38 is actually um, a, a cell membrane protein. Um, it's thought to be most but it was first thought to be purely an ectoenzyme, which means that the catalytic side of the enzyme is facing outside of the cell. But we now know that the catalytic side could also, um, could also be inside the cell as well. So it functions both inside and outside of the cell. Right. So I did have a, a question about that. So on, on the CD30, I, I saw in, in a number of the kind of papers that we talk about CD38 expression on M1 macrophages, particularly. Um, mm -hmm. how, how, how much does that represent the total CD38 expression within the body? I mean, is that a significant portion or do we need to worry about its expression in other, on other cell types? Yeah, that, that's, that's a great question. Um, so, yeah, we know that other cell types like B cells constantly express CD38 as well as some um, different types of subsets of T cells as well. Um, so that was a question that we were actually interested in looking at um, in our study to see can, um, what cell types are expressing CD38 in the aging process. And when we looked at um, um, both by flow cytometry as well and analysis we did by single cell sequencing, it was really only the macrophage where we saw a significant increase of CD38 with the aging process. Whereas in these other cell types like B cells or even endothelial cells, we didn't see much of an increase in CD38 um, with, with aging. So it seems that, it, um, so your question is whether these other cell types are also major sinks of NAD. And I, I would say that they are definitely consuming um, that their CD38 is definitely consuming a, a portion of NAD, but it seems to be a basal portion that, that I, I suspect doesn't change um, from young to old, whereas the macrophages um, um, slowly, because of their, um, what we showed in our papers, they slowly start accumulating expression of CD38 during aging, and they seem to be major consumers in the aging process. Right, okay, that, okay, that makes sense. So. In, I think in one of your experiments, as well as I think one that you mentioned Dr. Chinney did, uh, you used a CD38 knockout mice, right? And, and then that had like beneficial effects in that the NAD levels remained high during the, during the lifespan, it didn't decrease. So were there any negative effects? I mean, I assume CD38 exists for some reason within our body. Yeah, definitely. Um... So before I go into the negative effects, I'd like to first say what's um, what were the beneficial effects um, that have been okay. observed, yeah. um, both from Chini's lab and from our lab. So um, some of the beneficial effects that have been observed um, from studying the knockouts is that they have improved muscle function. So during aging, we see less fibrosis. Um, they have been shown by Chini's lab to have um, increased or improved cardiac function compared to older um, wild-time mice. Um, and also when you look at the tissues themselves, you see less inflammatory cells infiltrating the tissues during the aging process. Um, but as you mentioned, there are some consequences to knocking out CD38 where you do get some negative side effects. Um, and one is that we know that CD38, CD38 um, is a really important molecule or, or protein for the immune response. Um, it plays a role in immune cell trafficking. It also plays a role in responses to um, bacterial um, um, immune responses. So how we fight off bacteria. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's also some effects um, on the nervous system or the brain by knocking out CD38. So mice that lack CD38 have been observed by other groups to have some, um, some autism-like um, behaviors as well. So, um, so, I, um, so there are definitely some negative consequences to, to knocking out CD38, but also some beneficial ones. And, and that's mm -hmm. what we're really trying to tease apart. Right. Yes. No, I understand that. So just, I just have one thought on that, which is, so you knock out CD38 in mice. Would it be safe to say that the, uh, the lab environment is reasonably sterile? I mean, I assume there's not a large number of, 
bugs. And so perhaps if you had like a CD38 knockout mouse in the wild, it, it would have a it would have more detrimental effects because it wouldn't be able to fight off uh, bugs. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, so um, one of the caveats to our studies in aging is that we're we're pitting these old knockout or we're aging these knockout mice in a relatively sterile environment compared to um, what a normal mouse in the wild would encounter. So yeah, you're correct. Um, uh, a mouse lacking CD38 would probably not age too long because it, it may <laughs> get an infection and be in a be unable to fight it off. Right. Okay. Um, so, so you do, you, you did mention that, uh, so M1 macrophages seem to be the ones that increase the amount of uh, CD38 expression as we get older. So could we just take a step back and can you explain, so what is an M1 macrophage and how does it differ from like an M2 and uh, and I guess, how does it get created? Sure, yeah, that's, a, that's um, something that I'm really interested in this study since a lot of my work is mostly in macrophages. So um, I like to say macrophages are one of the most dynamic cells in our body, and that's because they could take on different types of functions. And some include, include um, pro-inflammatory functions like protecting us from bacteria or pathogens, um, whereas other functions include um, kind of what we are, are more homeostatic functions, so kind of cleaning up damage or um, dying cells in our body and, and kind of resolving inflammation. Um, so we like to call these distinct polarization states the M1 and M2 um, paradigm. So the M1 macrophages are the macrophages that are protecting us from the bacteria and they're thought to be more pro-inflammatory. Um, and once the bacteria is kind of fought off, you um, the macrophages can, can do some surveillance of the tissues or organs and um, and then they undergo a switch to an M2-like macrophage, which will then be kind of a resolving or anti-inflammatory macrophage that will be there to clean up any damage, um, make off any um, particles or debris or, or dying cells, and then the, the inflammation gets resolved and the macrophages kind of return to a more um, basal state um, and kind of resume their normal homeostatic functions. Interesting. So I, I wasn't clear about that before. So it's the same physical cell that expresses these different kind of roles over time? Yeah, well, we're not quite sure about that. Um, okay. It's thought that perhaps maybe, for example, M1 macrophages in vivo may be more, for example, um, macrophages that are recruited from um, the blood, so they're mo monocyte-derived macrophages, whereas um, macrophages that are seated um, in our tissues during development may take on more of the homeostatic functions and um, more roles that um, are more M2-like. But I would say that the M1, M2 paradigm is, is it's actually a very simplified model that mm. we use to study macrophages mostly um, in vitro because they're very kind of distinct polarization states. Um, the problem is in vivo that it's much more complicated than that because macrophages in vivo can have um, some um, functions of both M1 or M2 macrophages at any given time. So it's, it's, it's something that... Um, yeah, it's very subjective when you're, when you're looking at in vivo macrophages and gets very complicated. Right. Yes, uh, I'm sure that is one thing that I have noticed about biology. It, it, it's all very complicated. It's, there's never a simple answer. Yeah. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.